Welcome to this week's weekly update. The Legislative Task Force looking into whether or not to set up a state health exchange met earlier this week on Monday. Jack Rovner, founder of the Health Law Consultancy, gave a presentation via teleconference on setting up a nonprofit for a state health exchange. He claims that doing this is a private market solution. It should be noted also that Rovner's firm represents insurance companies, including some in Idaho. Senator Steve Vick was skeptical of Rovner's claim, saying that because there is no competition, it doesn't seem like a free market solution. He added that he thinks setting up a nonprofit is just a different way to have the government do it. A new report shows that non-teaching staff in Idaho schools expanded by more than triple the rate of student enrollment from 1992 to 2009. During this time span, student enrollment in Idaho increased by 21.9%, but administrative and non-teaching employment increased an incredible 73.2%. Representative Eric Simpson told IdahoReporter.com that the report blows a hole in the theory that more taxpayer money pumped into the public education system will result in more teachers and better student performance. This week we ran a three-part series on candidate surveys from the Idaho Freedom Foundation, which publishes IdahoReporter.com. The foundation asked candidates a number of questions ranging from Propositions 1, 2, and 3, education funding for K-12 schools and public college funding, privatizing liquor in the state, so-called sin taxes, and others. The results were interesting. With regards to Props 1, 2, and 3, the majority of candidates supported the education reforms. Those candidates who chose to explain their answers not surprisingly said they support education. But the consensus for those that support the education reforms was that while they support education, the current system needs to be changed and we need to work to keep improving our education system in the state. To read more about the surveys and how the results turned out, please visit IdahoReporter.com. To see specific results for each candidate who chose to respond to the surveys, visit IdahoFreedom.net. That's it for this week's weekly update. Stay up to date on important policy news from around the state by checking out our website, liking us on Facebook, or following us on Twitter at IdahoReporter. We'll see you next week. Thank you for watching.